HiSec Buyback offers 90% GDA anywhere in HiSec. Simply go to HiSec.EveBuyback.com, appraise your items, create a contract, and get paid quickly. This is Talking in Stations, a show about EVE Online. I'm your host, Artemis Abosa. Joining me in the station today, we have Nick Bison. Good afternoon, everybody. And also, we have Gregorin Musu. Good evening. Uh, how are you doing? You know, I'm doing very well. I am super excited for today's show. And just to give the audience a heads up off the bat, yeah, the audio levels are going to be a little bit lower. Um, we tried some things on our end to turn them up, but you might just have to increase the volume on your end there, Molomir. But apart from that, this is going to be a bit of a different show today. Specifically, we're going to be a bit more chill, and we're going to be going through the process of Nick and I sort of looking back on how we made changes to our mining setup. It's not a little bit. Um, well, well, let me let me try one thing really quick. Hang on. This is going to be a bit more of a chill show, so we will be having a little bit less polish in terms of what you guys see on the screen, but we're going to be getting a lot of good information out there, so I hope you enjoy. Well, I just put the pressure on me saying it was going to be good information. Well, Nick will have information. I don't know about the good part. That's all right. That's all right. All right, well, let's just go ahead and jump right into it. I think where we should begin is where we started pre-changes. Uh, if you're unfamiliar, the way that mining works in EVE Online was significantly changed about a month ago with the From Extraction pr to Production update. And it introduced whole new mechanics. It reworked the way that mining crystals happen. It introduced new modules for gas harvesting for mining barges and just a whole bunch of stuff changed. And Nick and I are in very different setups in terms of what we do for harvesting and mining. Nick, can you just roll the audience through what is your old setup or what's your situation? In what setting do you mine? Well, uh, for those of you that don't know, I'm uh, pretty much right now mining purely in high sec. Uh, obviously belt mining, then off uh, We've got a little R4 moon that we go ahead and get it from there. And then, you know, obviously we'll run over and grab some ice also. So a little bit of little bit of each of what's available in uh, those three dynamics in high sec. Um, generally, what we would have, what we had been doing was, you know, standard orca and support for generally four to five miners. We'd have at least you know one orca per four or five, and potentially a hauler. Um, that depends on the warp time back and forth when the orca gets full, and of course the cargo sizes. One of the reasons we stuck with retrievers and mackinaws was the big cargo, or, or used to be called ore hold. Now it's a mining hold. Um, the sheer size of that, if the orca was gone dropping off for any length of time that made it easier. You didn't have to worry about filling your uh, hold all the way up while that was going on. So that was kind of the standard that we were doing is you could plop into a spot, especially in a uh, uh, many, many high sec miners will have bookmarks at their different, the old same place to where they can basically hit the whole asteroid field. Well, you ain't doing that now uh, with the changes that have happened. What um what specifically which change made it so you can't do that anymore? Well, if you can, uh, I'm gonna warp over and show them. Um, right on. So if you if you don't mind, what I'm gonna do is I'm popping out of the Athener and I'm gonna go to one of my old bookmarks that we used to call the dinner bell. Um, and it was just a nice little spot that we could run out to. 
and it'll take us just a moment to get there. It's fairly close. Now, I'm going to do, what I used to do is warp the fleet to zero at that location. And once the Orca boosts were on, you could hit everything in the asteroid field uh, or in the belt. What you're going to see now is a little different. And we just landed, and right off the bat, the nearest rock to us is 23 away, and they stretch out. I'm scrolling down all the way out to about 80 kilometers out. Now, though overall, that doesn't sound real difficult until you zoom out and realize they're all in a spheroid now. And you can see we've got a, got a corp mate out here already shooting, or not a corp mate, but a friend out here already shooting stuff. But as you can see, the layout is circular, and I'm just going to kind of roll away from him so he doesn't think I'm bothering him. Um, and it's basically, if you look at it, it's a shell of Veldspar, Veldrox, with the majority, in this case, of your Plague and Scordite on the interior side, and nothing's close. So if you're going to do this, and get your standard amount of Veld, you're going to be moving around a lot. Mm, right on. Okay, so that's sort of the, yeah. the setting that you're operating in. Gregorian, did you have something? Uh, well, I didn't really have anything. I'm, I've am i never been a huge miner, so I usually mine when someone else has boosts, and I just fly a couple of barges and haul it back to where I need it later. Right on. And you are operating in Nullsec most of the time, right? Yeah. Right now I'm in Pandemic Legion, so I do industry I do tech two production mainly out of uh Panfam owned structures. And sometimes I I mine in order to pro have something to sell that would get me the 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 liquid isk that I would need to afford to buy more in inputs since sometimes it takes a while to sell what I produce. Sweet. And then you said you're usually mining with somebody else boosting. Are you typically like in a, a moon that's been popped or are you in an ore anomaly? Yeah, usually when I mine, I mine moons, which I haven't actually done, done that in a couple of months though. Right on. Okay, and I specifically am mining in a wormhole. Uh, the vast majority of the mining that I do is gas huffing, so mining gas clouds which spawn in signatures that you have to scan down. But I do on occasion have a moon that I will run a drill cycle on and then harvest the ore from that moon. There are also ore anomalies that spawn in wormhole space, um, but I don't tend to mine those. The ore isn't really particularly up my alley. Uh, in wormhole space, we don't have the same asteroid belts that Nick has in HiSec, and we have different kinds of anomalies than uh, Gregorin would have in NullSec, and his moons are also way more valuable than mine. I think, Nick, you're also on an R4, right? Correct, and I got lucky. The particular R4 I've grabbed has uh, all four bitumens, cosite, uh, zeolite, and I just lost the other word. I don't remember. Mine is zeolites and cosites. I don't remember what the other one. But so that's that's where we are. That's our settings. Nick, let's roll through what your mining setup in terms of your ships and your fits looked like before the changes. Okay. Well, I don't have any that are currently. I'm going to go ahead and dock up and grab a Mackinac, and then open up the fit so you can kind of see what what has changed when I can explain what I've changed on it. So I'll be docking up in just a moment. Awesome. And I think the biggest thing to keep in mind when we first pull up this fit is that with the rebalance to mining also came a, a rebalance to all the mining ships. So the mining barges and the orca as well as the rorqual all got a bit of a rebalance. The porpoise was left out. Its changes are coming later. And... A big one for the mining barges specifically was their fitting and their tank. They all got a massive increase to their tank and significant changes to their fitting as well. Yep, okay. I uh, just docked up. I'm my no laughing. My Mackinac's name is Asteroid Defiler. 
number number six even been ganked uh, five times before this is no this is modification number six this is uh, okay. uh, what it looks like now and it's quite dirty as i'm sure you can tell as all miners should be yes yeah i don't clean my ships um one of the things that you know the basic stuff you instead of using the old uh, crystal style we're using the new in this case this one was outfitted for uh, moon moon ores but i'm a, i'm a, not one of those guys that goes for max yield on everything so you notice there's uh, screen reinforcers for thermal and kinetic built on low slot i do have a damage control um, and then across didn't I used to not have the uh, large shield extender, but just an EM reinforcer, multi spectrum, and then of course a, a small shield booster. Prior to the change, I was running about 37,000 EHP on this. Now, by just swapping, dropping the rock uh, scanner and tossing the large shield in, without Orca boost, it's running 59,000. With Orca Boost runs about seventy four, so yeah, so that's a huge change um, to the defensive ability, and still pulling you know good ore, you know, um, in this particular in the head I'm wearing right here, you know, each laser is pulling twenty two over twenty two hundred M three, and you have four slap four. Uh, Mackinaws out there, and every cycle you're pulling, you know, ten thousand M three. So it goes through it pretty, pretty nicely. So the biggest change to get right down to it was dropping the rock scanner and putting in the large shield extender. That alone, along with the changes in the Orca boosts, increased the EHP of this thing tremendously. Um, you know, which is you know that and the or hold size going from a paltry 35,000 M3, now it maxes out at 44,296. So you can get a lot of ore in, in a pretty good, pretty good uh, time frame. Fair enough. And you talked a bit earlier about you tend to have an orca out there with your fleet, sometimes a hauler as well. But even with sort of both of those options on the table, you still chose a Machina as opposed to a Hulk. Walk us through, like, what's the difference between a Hulk and a Machina and then a Skiff while we're at it? And why did you choose the Machina to be your, your ship of choice? Um, gosh, Skiff, you know, Skiffs, we use those um, over in the ice fields generally um, for no other reason than... You know, they've always been good at ice, and they're, they've always been tanky as heck. Uh, they are definitely less tanky now. Uh, we went through discussing it you know, amongst a couple of us in the core, and a couple of the folks are using the Hulks. Uh, and they do mine faster. They do mine more. But they have a small ore hold, so they're, you're dragging more often. I'm a lazy damn miner because I'm usually running four of these at one time plus an Orca. So it's five characters, and you know, and I'll forget, and you know, not always rely on, uh, you know, someone to go, hey, your laser's off. You know, it's because my cargo hold's full. I don't really run into that issue with the Mackinac, and like I mentioned, I'm a lazy miner, uh, which means I'm only going to, I'm going to fill up that orca, run it to the station, do the drop off, run back out, get a second load. Once it's full fill up all the Mackinac's and then go, everybody drops off because it's time for my smoke break. Um, so that second load, filling four Mackinac's, yeah, I'm running back in with, uh, you know, over 400,000 M3, and it takes about 38 minutes to fill everything up. Right on. We did have a question in the chat I want to touch on real quick. Uh, let me get your name again. Raz1980 asks, what's better for yield, faction strip miners or T2 with crystals? And I noticed you currently are using, you said you, your loadout for moons, you are using the T2 with type A crystals. Walk us through that thought process there. Okay, yeah. And, and just, you know, to answer, Raz, to answer your question straight up, straight yield 
per cycle, the T2 with T2 crystals is going to pull more than a uh, the ore strip miners, but the ore strip miners have zero waste. So that makes them very attractive if you have a lot of time and like, you know, if your moon is doubled in size or your moon rocks um, and you want, and you have the time to get all of it, then the ore strip miners make sense. If you don't have that much time and you're just trying to get out there and grab what you can and more, which is why I go, I went to the uh, T2 type A crystals. I was thinking about the type Bs, but they have a higher waste, even though they have a higher yield. Um, and and th this was the compromise I made for me and my folk, you know, and, and realistically, it's more just for me. The different people in the core, you know, we don't have a, you know, this is the fit you'll use. It's like you use what you're comfy with, you know, just try and be mindful and, uh, you know, help each other out. And I'm going to try and pull up some numbers on screen so you get an idea of what we're talking about. So if I look at, um, and it also depends on which crystal you use. I think we'll talk a little bit more about crystals here in a sec. You were using type A's. For an example, I'm going to use type B's, which is what I would use. And if you're, if you're just looking at raw, how much ore are you pulling in? There's a limited amount of ore, or there's an unlimited amount of ore out there. So like you're mining in high sec and you've got an ore belt or you're mining some ore anoms or something. All you care about is that mining amount over the activation time and duration. And T2 strips with T2 type B crystals, you're gonna be mining more per cycle and have a shorter cycle time than the ore strip miners will, even on the same character, same everything else. But the difference is, like Nick was talking about, you've got that residue or waste probability modifier. With T2 strips, you have a 34% residue chance. And then when you put the type B crystals onto it, it doubles that. So you're up to 64%. To and basically that means every time a cycle finishes with your strip miner, there's that percentage chance for waste to occur, for some mining residue to happen. And then a certain volume amount goes away. So in my case, every time a cycle time ends, there's a 64% chance that 2,211 M3 worth of ore is going to disappear from the rock that I was mining. I still get everything I mined in that cycle. There's just less in the rock left over for me to mine. Ore is different. Ore will have zero waste probability, zero waste volume multiplier. So you're guaranteed every time you're going to get the same amount of ore out of the rock and no extra is going to disappear. So these are used more often on the high value moons that Gregorin's typically mining but they are also exceedingly expensive. I'm yeah, in a wormhole think, right now, so I can't check the market prices. Go ahead, Gregorin. I, th I think, uh, I don't remember the exact rules, but I think when Kenneth Feld was, was saying on the show what the rules were, since he wrote them, for my alliance's moons require uh, those type A crystals. Those are mandatory for the, the really good stuff. Yeah, and if we use, let me pull some crystals out, and I'll just compare type A versus type B on the T2 strips. And I, I, while I'm doing this, I want to ask, Nick, when you do belt mining, do you use type B or do you still use type A? We actually just put regular uh, strip miner ones on because we're planning on getting it all. Ah, right on. But the uh, ore strip miners you had mentioned, um, the price has gone up um, in Dodixie, which is because uh, I'm in Saint Liaison right now. They'll go anywhere from 300 to 700 million uh, per. And I thought they were expensive when they were 200. Yeah, and I miss. I would be use. I would have a set of them for all my guys, but I I missed the boat on that when they. You know, I saw it coming, but I didn't. Basically, I didn't stick a crowbar in my wallet and uh, and get them. All right, let me get another charge on here. Uh, 
And while you're doing that, you know, one of the things between the A and the B charges, uh, crystals, that, you know, you had mentioned is if you go to the B crystal, potentially your um, your probability of, of residue goes up to over 60%, all right, which means you get, a, you know, a full belt or whatever you're mining. Um, you know, you, you got about between a 35 and a 40% more that you can get over that amount of time, you know, if you get the whole belt out. That's one of the reasons we stuck with the A's is because we got, instead of that 35 to 40% more ore, we have the potential of getting up to 64.5% more. So, you greedy miners, that's just me. Well, that, and you guys, you use the ore and the minerals that you mine to produce stuff, right? That's correct. The uh, the actual moon ores we do not. Uh, we, we're currently selling that off to the highest bidder. Um, but the uh, you know normal ores off the belts we produce off that. You know we're building a lot of actually the ore ships is kind of our our gig right now. Right on. But Gregorin and I, I think Gregorin, you mentioned you just sell it straight, right? You yeah, use I... mining to make it. I sell, I sell what I mine. Sometimes I buy, I actually buy the same stuff back from some, some from the people who I sell it to later. But when I'm when I mine it, I do I mine so I can make a quick isk uh, to in, in between sales. Right on. All right, I've got everything pulled up now, so I want to roll through type B versus ore versus type A. Um, so we compared ore and type B quickly. With type B, you get more per cycle. You also have a shorter cycle time, but you do have a high chance of residue occurring. If you take a look over here at type A on the far right, we've got the same amount of ore per cycle as we do on type B. So the same amount's hitting your hold, but you have a longer cycle time. Your cycle time's the same as the ore strip miner. So you are going to be mining more using type A than you would get using an ore or a tier one, but you still have a little bit of chance for residue to occur. In this case, it's 37.6% chance of having some mining residue, some waste, some lost ore from the rock if you're using T2 with a strip miner too, or with a, with a type A crystal. So it's sort of like the, the mid spot, which for some people is the sweet spot for you're getting or faster, but there is still a chance of losing a little bit. All right, and then I saw you you pulled out the orca for us, Nick. So let's let's roll through your orca. All right, this this one, with the exception of the uh, lar uh, large industrial core one on it, is a pre uh, change orca. Um, you know, and part of part of his whole gig is. And again, this is not, this is just how I do it. Everybody modify this the way you like it. But if you notice in the top, in the highs, you get two mining foremen, you know, uh, for both laser optimization and laser field enhancement. So you get the extra range and you get the extra, you know, shortened cycle times. But I run two shield uh, boosts also the harmonizing and the uh, shield extension. So, you know, because we're very defensive minded. All you got to do is get raided by uh, code or uh, safety once in a while and you start going, okay, I got to make some changes here. Um, you also notice, and this is why we assign generally four miners per orca. The first thing he does when everybody lands is he locks up his squad. So they're pre-locked. You get a large ancillary remote shield boost on there. You know, and then of course he's got his own, you know, for local. Um, in the lows, no, there's no cargo expanders. This is uh, bulkheads and damage control. So, but you're still looking at, you know, over 300,000 M3. Nice. Oh, and it looks like, hey, higher brand's going to go ahead and uh, donate me some uh, Dead Space Shield Hardeners. Appreciate it. <laughs> Like I said, this is the uh, pre-changes. Uh, my One of my other characters has the post-change guy on it. The big difference here is obviously we tossed a large uh, indie core on. 
And this is still the T1s. The T2s are sitting in my other hangar. Awesome. And you mentioned that you, you do have to fit some tank on specifically to deal with gankers who might show up. But then you also have rats that spawn in your regular ore belts too, yeah? Go ahead, say it again. I'm sorry, say it again. In the, in the ore belts that you guys are in, your rats spawn, right? Yeah, but they're high sec rats. I mean, you, you can swat them with a fly swatter. They're really not much. Fair enough. Awesome. I think that's a pretty good rundown. With the new indie core, and you guys are, are moving around a lot, how does that work? Like, I guess it's hard to compare pre changes. You'd hit everything from the same spot. Post changes, do you just warp the orca into a new bookmark on a rock when you guys leave the field and come back to drop? Or do you slow boat the orca around unseaged? What we'll do, what we've been doing, um, you know, because we're still figuring it all out. Um, is we're taking two orcas out opposite sides of these new asteroid fields. And basically, they're going to you know, find their first spot. And the rocks are far much more spread out. And you know, they're, the orcas are basically going to cruise around slowly while the miners, you know, each one has four assigned to them, that they drop off into them. So we end up doing a work your way around the asteroid field. That's the only way we've come across so far that it works. And Joe, just to, uh, if you shield rip a gank target in high sec, the orca does not get concorded. You does not get there in the same fleet, in the same core. I've had numerous gank attempts where we've, you know, shield boosted and concord don't care. Yeah, it's the only way you would get concorded for remote repping someone is if they were criminals and you remote repped them. It used to be a way for people to to grief incursion fleets before safeties were a thing, is they would have one of the logistic ships in a logistics chain do something to get themselves concorded, and the entire logistics wing of the incursion fleet would get concorded. And then, of course, an incursion fleet with no logi, everybody dies. So they would get a spy into fleet, concord themselves on purpose, and effectively wipe an entire incursion fleet. But there has since been improvements to the crime and punishment system to make that harder to do. Alright, well I'm going to go ahead, swap over and look at my setup. I have two different setups. Uh, like I said, I do mine gas most of the time, but I also do mine a little bit of moon ore. And in a similar vein, I'll quickly show my... I have a moon. And I want to show the um, the layout of the ore. So it's all spread out in like a big plane. Out from the ore. So effectively a rock gets pulled out of the moon towards my Athenor. And then gets expanded into this giant field that's a plane. So you could warp out to a rock and be within range of like... I don't know, eight to ten other rocks if you wanted to. For me, the way that I've optimized this is I also use I use retrievers because I'm in a wormhole. There is no local, so I can't tell if there are hostiles in the system. And also, anybody can shoot me. There is no Concord to back me up, so if I get caught, I'm dead. So I, I use particularly cheap ships so that if I do lose them, it's not a big loss. And then... I use retrievers because what I'll do is I'll warp out a porpoise and four retrievers onto a rock. And with the cycle time I use on my moon, the rocks are just big enough that I can mine out an entire rock with all my miners on it before or just as my holds fill up. Usually like one or two ships will get their holds full and the rest of them will finish nuking out that rock. Then I warp back to the Athenor, dump it into the Docking cargo deposit, and then warp to another rock. And so the whole time I'm either on a rock aligned back to the Athenor, or I am at the Athenor tethered up, dropping off the ore. The other thing you may have noticed on my fit, which is very weird, very abnormal, is I have stasis webifiers. Um, so for my fit, I am zero tank, at least zero tank intentionally. We'll talk about the rigs in a second. But what I went for first is like, I want the max yield. So I've got T2 strips with type B crystals. I don't mind the waste because most of my ore despawns anyway. And then I've got three mining lasers upgrades, again, just to boost that ore income. So now I've got mids and rigs open. 
the key rig here is the Higgs. What this will do is dramatically increase my mass, which in turn decreases my speed. I want to always be aligned out. That way, if anything shows up on grid, D cloaks next to me, I see something warping in, I can warp out instantly. I don't have to align to try and warp out. So with that, if you're always aligning somewhere, it means I'm getting further and further away from the rock, which is bad. So the Higgs slows me down, means I get further away slower. And then I've also got two try marks on. And again, this is so that I have increased HP, lower speed is explicitly what I want. Specifically the, um, the drawback. On these tunes, I do not have the armor rigging skill. So I am getting a 10% reduction in my max velocity per try mark that I'm fitting. Again, just to reduce the speed, I mean, I'm going away from my rock slower. Add on to that, I use webs and I do a spider webbing of all of my ships. So even on the porpoise that I'll show you in a minute, I have webs fit to it so that each ship is webbing another one and going that much slower. In total, all of my ships go about 10.6 meters per second when they're at a line speed, which is 75% of your max speed. So I can stay really, really close to my rocks at all time, even though I'm constantly aligned out, ready to warp away. And the reason you want to stay close to the rocks is one, so you don't run out of laser range, and then two, because I also use mining drones. And as any Rorqual pilot would know, with mining drones, they have to travel to the rock and then back, but they're very slow. So the closer you are to the rock, the faster your effective yield will be. One of the folks in chat was asked, you know, saying that's pretty slick. Have the sleepers caught you yet? Fortunately, I'm mining on a moon, and moons in wormhole space, no sleepers spawn. So you can sit out on a moon in a wormhole space for as long as you want to, no rats will spawn. If you go to one of the ore anomalies, they will, but not on the moon, so I just don't have to care. And even if one did, I just warp my whole fleet back to the Athenor, dock up, and shoot the rats with the Athenor. That's why they don't spawn, I think. Seems to be realized they just get farmed. Wait a minute. An EVE player farming something? No. I know, right? All right, and to support that, I use a porpoise, not an orca, because I don't want a siege in place. I very much want to be able to warp out at a moment's notice. And with the porpoise, I've got, again, focus purely on yield here. So I've got the laser optimization increases the cycle time on my lasers. The field enhancement increases the range so as i'm aligning out i never go outside my laser range and then crystal or equipment preservation makes my crystals last longer type b crystals are the most volatile so they're more likely to break faster so this just increases the lifespan of those crystals means i don't have to dock up as often etc again i've got the higgs rig and then a command processor so that i can fit the three boosts and then a drone mining augmenter just to, to get a bit of extra yield out of the porpoise itself two webs to match the rest of the fleet, drone navs, again, with drones, the faster your drones are going, the closer you are to the rock, the more yield you're gonna get. A little bit of cargo, and that's just so that I don't have to dock up and move my stuff. This is serves a couple of purposes. One, let, lets me keep more charges in my cargo so I never run out, and two, it slows me down some more. If you look at the cargo expander, it will reduce by 18% my max velocity. And that's what I'm focused on. My ships want max yield. Part of getting max yield is moving slowly away from the rocks. And then I've got a, a tractor beam. In case, on occasion, all of my ore or all of my miners will fill up before the rock pops, I can have them jet can some, put it into the mining hold on the porpoise, and that'll give me just enough extra room to completely wipe out a rock before I have to warp away. So that is the moon mining segment. Let me quickly check the chat and see if there are any points or questions that I want to hit. Well, there was one about uh, tank and rats, uh, about fitting shield boosters and deploying medium drones to uh, whack the rats and not, not dash off. Have you done that at all or not an issue? Yeah, for, for me in, high, or in wormhole space, it's not an issue whatsoever. Uh, they're on the moons in wormhole space, no rats, period. I think, Nick, you and HiSec, you've got the shield booster and you use just damage drones all the time, right? Or do you guys swap between damage and mining based on when the rats are there? 
Oh, well, definitely damage drones because it's, you know, they're rats, so they deserve it. The, uh, now granted, they're high sec rats, so they're not much. The main reason for the shield boost has to do with, you know, anti gank. Uh, you know, just if they want to get me, they're going to get me, but they're going to work for me and hopefully make them work for it a bit. Right on. So I think our, our ore setups are pretty similar. We both went with T2 over faction. And again, one thing we haven't been able to go through very well, just to don't have a market pulled up, ore is extremely expensive right now. Um, I could probably log in a, a tune in Jita here in a bit, and we can look at the crazy prices of the ore. But especially because you're looking at, if you want to waste absolutely nothing and get the best possible yield, then you want to use ore strip miners, period, end of story. Plus, it doesn't require any skill training into the crystals, which are less than they were before, but still an investment of skills. All right, next up we have um, gas huffing, which is my main activity, actually. And if I pull up the fit here, okay, this is post changes. So with I'm gas huffing... Focus on that so we can see it a little better. Oh, thank you. With gas huffing, you might initially think, what are you doing in a Gnosis? And let me explain. Uh, the way gas harvesting works, there are two types. There's frigate gas huffing or, and turret gas huffing, and then there is barge gas huffing, which is new with the changes. Um, so the thing that stuck around from my old setup was the Gnosis as the booster with its own gas scoops on it. It can fit five, which is allowed by having level five in the gas harvesting skill. And on its own, the Gnosis, if you only have one tune to use, you want to be flying a Gnosis self-boosting with five scoops. That'll be the fastest you can get in a single ship. Um, at least pre-changes, that was the case. I haven't done the math versus a, a Coveter now. Um, and then what I do for this, I've just got a Higgs Anchor. Again, I want to always be aligned out. If I'm caught, I'm dead. Tank doesn't matter to me. So I just want to be constantly aligned out, but also not going out of range on what I'm trying to harvest. And as you can see, the class scout scoops have a tiny, tiny range. So the slower I go, the better. And then cargo hold optimizations, just so that I have enough cargo hold on the Gnosis to, to harvest some clouds. So I've got a little over 5K. Same dealio with the low slots. I've got a whole load of cargo expanders. And I do have tank on this Gnosis. The reason for that is rats do spawn in the gas sites. It's about, about 15 minutes. You can literally set a timer on your phone after you first warp into the gas site, then rats will spawn, with the exception of one site which has sentries in it just always, and nobody minds that one anyway. Um, so I do have a little bit of tank in case I'm not paying attention, and the rats spawn. They will tend to shoot the Gnosis first because it's the biggest threat, as far as I can tell, based on the way their IR works. They've always shot it first when I've run into them before, so... That's why the Gnosis has some tank on it, just in case the rats spawn and I'm not paying attention. And then well, what? Yeah, Miner not paying attention? No. <laughs> Talking crazy now. I know, right? Go ahead, Gurorn. When I was a new player, I was mostly living in wormholes, so my huffing gas was my main income back then. And if I had more accounts, I probably would have had one Gnosis, but... I usually just ran a single uh, venture or prospect, maybe two, because that's how many characters I could put on grid at a time back then. Yeah, and let's pre-changes, the venture was my ship of choice after the one Gnosis. Once you have a single booster, extra boosters don't help you at all. The boosts don't stack, I'll just use whatever happens to be the best. And so I'd use the other four accounts in ventures. They'd have their maximum of two scoops, because that's all you can fit with your turret slots. A cloak, warp core stab, so it was very hard to catch, MWD, and then a little bit of tank again in case I wasn't paying attention. Um, plus some polycarbon engine housings. And the way that I would roll this, I'd warp everybody in onto a gas cloud, and then hit regroup with my booster, with my Gnosis. So that would force all of the ventures to orbit it and I'd have the micro-warp drives on. And then if ever hostiles entered the grid, 
I would warp the Gnosis out and the Ventures with their prop mods on would just start going in a straight line in random directions and be very hard to catch. So if, if the person was lucky, if they scrammed one thing, they might scram a Venture, but even a Saber bubbling up wouldn't be able to keep all of them bubbled and I'd be able to get most of them out. But of course with the changes, now mining barges can use gas harvesters. Was that a sacrificial venture you were talking about? <laughs> Effectively, yeah, it, it very much was. The post changes and now have a very strange fit, Coveter. And the reason I use a Coveter is because I have five accounts harvesting gas. Um, even with the doubled volume of gas per site, all five accounts with um, like with the, the volume of it can harvest a full gas site just fine without filling any of them up. In fact, they can harvest two full gas sites without having to dock up and drop, even with the tiny, tiny mining hole on a coveter. So a Mackinac would just, it'd be a complete waste, or a retriever in this case. Yeah, um, that was the reason why back when I was mainly huffing gas for my income, I preferred the prospect over the venture because... I didn't have a lot of accounts and I wanted to get as much cargo space as possible in what li the small, the one or two characters I could put on grid. Yeah, and the, the main advantage of the prospect over the venture, in fact, the only one, was its uh, cargo hold. It had twice the cargo capacity or the mining capacity of the venture. It could Kovops cloak, but once you're in a gas site itself, that doesn't matter. You're, you're decloaked by the gas cloud anyway. So the only reason that you would want to fly a prospect is the mining hold and the Kovacs cloak for flying around. Um, but I'm using here a coveter and I use a Higgs anchor. So again, I'm aligning out with the miners now as well as the Gnosis. And then some hyperspatial optimizer just to warp back and forth to the sites faster. The, the more time I'm spending in space, the more risk there is of getting caught. So I want to minimize the amount of time I'm spending in space and vulnerable. Warping faster does that. And also low friction nozzle joints just to reduce the amount of time it takes me to align. The only time I am at risk of dying is if I'm on a wormhole warping to or from a gas site, or if I am just landing at a gas site and aligning out. There's about like 30 seconds of time when I'm vulnerable there and can't immediately warp out. Um, so that's what the low friction nozzle joints just reduces that time. Gas cloud scoops. In the low slots, there is no like mining augmenter for scoops. Um, it's, you just can't modify them beyond the base module. So I have, again, inertial stabilizers to speed me up. Warp core stab in case I get caught. Uh, hardener, shield hardener, just in case I'm not paying attention, get some rat damage on me. And a burst jammer again, in case I get caught to try and break the lock on whatever is scramming me so that I can warp out. And with this, let me pull up Pypha here. So if I pull up Pypha and I compare my new fit versus the old one, Oh, hang on just a second. Uh, it appears uh, you were muted again. I'm not sure what's going on. Okay, what Anything part didn't we now? hear? Uh, about the last 20 seconds of your talk um, is what it appears. 
apologies for that. Uh, I think the last 20 seconds were, even with the doubled volume of ore, I am still harvesting everything before the rats will spawn. So e even though there's more ore or more gas to harvest now than there was before, I will still harvest absolutely everything in less than 15 minutes and be able to get out before the rats spawn. So I'm clearing an entire site. I haven't, I literally have not seen gas site rats since the, the updated changes and I swapped over to using coveters. It's insane. So there you go. I think overall looking at the changes and the way that we evaluated how to adjust to them, Nick, I think your, your biggest boon was the increase in tank that you can now get. So you are much more resistant to gankers. Is that right? That's, yeah, that's probably number one for the Mackinaws and the Hulks that we're using. The uh, <clears throat> Orcas, a little bit more too. I mean, it, it's popped up some also um, from, you know, from the basic fit we're running, which was about 330,000 EHP is now over four and a quarter. So that, like I said before, they want me, they're going to get me, but they, they're going to have to try again. So, Right on. And then for me, I'm not using the T2 ships. I, I wasn't before either, just because there's a good risk that whenever I undock, I, I lose my ships. There's nothing I can do. Just a cloaked saber on a wormhole and my entire fleet's dead. Um, so I use cheaper versions, but the biggest boon for me is very much the yield that I'm getting. I'm harvesting way faster, even on the moon ore, just because type B crystals exist now, and then on the gas because I can use coveters instead of ventures and still mine everything out very quickly. All right, they're still reporting low volume, but I think we, yeah. But yeah, I think we have a little Streamlabs issue. Sorry about that, guys, but we'll uh, we'll get it sorted out. Indeed. Look at uh, sales price and chart for Exumers and the Eve Cookbook profit margin later. All right, let me log into Jita soon. Hang on. Connecting. While I'm doing that, Nick, do you use Eve Cookbook? What tools do you use for your manufacturing and stuff? Oh my gosh. To be absolutely honest, I use, you know, Nick's old spreadsheets that I've been dealing with on my own for quite some time. And are they the most efficient or the most accurate? Heck no, but it works for me. Um, Eve Cookbook obviously is a great one, but, you know, um, I think one of the biggest things I end up looking at is Celestie's or tables more than anything else. Fair enough. Uh, Eve Marketer is brought up. Oh, and it's back now. Awesome. It Eve is? Eve Marketer was, yeah, it was down for a little while. Has it been updated post Oh. They say that's a good thing. There's a uh, Ravworks got updated really fast. I mean, he was he was on that. Yeah, I'm glad Ravworks got updated because that's the main tool that I use now. Okay, so it looks like the website Eve Marketer is back, which is awesome. It means I can check prices through it, except it's missing the new stuff. Does it have the new crystals? Oh, focus on that, would you? What do we need? Oh, yep. What I'm looking for here, what are the new crystals called? Ah, one second. <laughs> I've got cans full of them, and you think I remember the name? <laughs> awesome. Looks like, yeah, we do have the new crystals in here. We just don't have, for whatever reason, gas harvesters. It's got the scoops, yeah. so the frigate size modules, but not the gas harvesters themselves. Awesome. Well, that, that gives us a chance to look at exactly. Let's look at a Hulk. Currently selling price in Jita, 277 for the hull. Buyers are 
on Dodixi, you could haul one over and sell it for a profit. But buyers are at around 277. 250 is looks like where the buyers are at for the majority of the volume. So if yeah, you want long to sell, term, that's not a bad price. I mean, the hulks have always been north of 250 uh, forever. So that's not a huge jump at all. Yeah, it looks like they spiked in price early in the summer or in the spring of this went down a little bit and then they've since spiked back up and are reaching a new a new high for this year. Now if we look at Eve Cook We'll remember the tip that Nick, or not Nick, um, Kenneth gave us, which is that you want to use a quantity of 100 when you're calculating this stuff. What's it saying the cost to build is? Estimated build cost per unit, 309. It must be because of the structures that I'm using. I bet you if you, whoever mentioned that in chat, if you want to give us a screenshot or something of what you're seeing because you've probably changed your settings to use the reduction in costs and stuff that you let's try a different system with less of a crazy industrial nonsense oh we've got zero me okay hang on i was actually going to ask that question did it change the metp There we go. Yeah, so if you increase the ME, even an ME of 10, which is fairly common from my understanding, like most people are producing at a higher ME than 10 even, or a lower ME, um, the build cost is dropping well below what it, what it should be or what it's selling for. And then if you factor in using a structure, let's say you're using an AS T2 rigged, maybe that's... Let's use a let's use a Raitaru T2 rigged. I feel like that's more reasonable. Unless you're a null sec, like if you're a Gregorin or you're any any F1 monkey in a in a null block, you would have access to a even a Satoyu with a T2 rig, but maybe yeah, not for some yeah, but a, you got to remember that uh, an invented blueprint uh, for a Hulk, the you'll almost never see an ME of ten. Okay, what yeah, what ME should I use? I would, uh, I'd go with the, just go middle of the road on a five. I'd go with four because the decryptors that I use for medium sized ships get me to uh, four ME. All right. I'd go, so yeah, I'd go with eight runs of four. 222 mil per build. And then you could literally sell to buy orders, make 30 mil on it. By the way, high brand. Uh, good catch on that ME. I can we I had spaced that out when we started putting it in. Yeah, so you're looking at a 13 to 14 percent profit if you're just selling straight to buy orders, which is insane. Yeah, the reason why you'll n almost never see an ME of 10 is because you basically can only get that from most by copying from a T2 BPO, and those are not. What oh widespread? Yeah, guys like us aren't going to have access to them. Indeed, and if you do have access to it, you probably aren't selling those VPCs. You're you're cornering the market. I want to find somebody that's got one and try and sweet talk them because I wouldn't mind getting one. Let's go to Ravworks and get a picture of like what it takes to build a Hulk because a Hulk is a T two ship, so it does require quite a bit of investment and i'm going to be honest i've never used ravworks before so can somebody walk me through step by step what do i need to do to to visualize a hulk here oh my gosh all right let me open mine up here and see if i can find it tree view i think is what i want for the visualization just start typing hulk oh well that was a lot easier than i expected yeah i like I've, I guess all I'd, the details are in the config, aren't they? Yeah, I I mostly use the 
the production planner for RavWorks rather than the tree view to tell me what materials I need and how many job runs I need for which components. But yeah, this tree view, which is a nice tool to sh give it an illustration. Yeah, so if you, if you look at the Hulk VPC, you will see that you need a coveter, some more fights, um, some RAM, construction blocks, thrusters, like all these components. And then if you go down the chain, like to build a coveter, you need some materials, some other minerals. The Morphite is a mineral of itself. RAM, you need some minerals. Construction blocks are just a thing. Ion thrusters begins to go further down the chain. That's a T2 component. Same with the rest of these all appear to be T2 components, which are gonna yeah. utilize subcomponents, which are gonna utilize reactions, which are gonna utilize moon materials. Yeah, the construction components are the construction blocks are made with in PI and everything below them, like the ion thrusters and whatever, those are all Galente uh, reactions. Yeah, Galente components. So they're made with reactions that include crystalline carbonide and uh, photonic metamaterials. Each empire has a different carbide and metamaterial in, in their T2 components, and all these things are made from reactions. And right. reactions are made from moon ore and fuel blocks. Fuel blocks are made from ice and PI. And all of it is time. Yes. Well, time and access, right? So you, Nick and Hisek and me and Wormholes, we don't even have access to the moons where we could harvest some of these materials. We literally just have to hope somebody with access mines it and then takes it to a market where we can buy it. Yeah, the uh, reacted uh, moon components are... When I'm building T2, I, I end up buying those directly off the market if I can get the right price. That's not going to, you know, you know, zero out any potential profit. Unless I'm building for my own use, then I really don't care. I just like to build. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, it occurs to me, Nick, you mentioned you harvest ice, but we didn't talk much about your ice setup. Has it changed much since the since the adjustment? Um, so far, the only thing that's changed on it, because I'm not a, I'm not a, a drone miner. Um, the biggest thing that's changed on the skiff is once again we dropped the uh, lock scanner, our survey scanner out, you know, for additional shielding. Uh, what that's done, it's tankier beast. It's got a little bigger uh, mining hold now, but all the changes we've made so far have made that mining foreman more more attentive. Uh, when he plops in, wh whether it's ice, ore, or moon, he's targeting the rocks and painting them, I'm sorry, painting them, tagging them with, you know, numbers or letters or some combination that each of the miners is, okay, I hit the ones that are marked A, or I hit the ones, not the twos, and each miner has their own thing. So we spread it out. It's made the mining foreman more important to us. So that, that's probably the biggest change, you know, to our, to our particular dynamic has been, you know, the, the workload on the a decent mining foreman. Awesome. And once again, I, you know, I, I, I probably sound like a broken record again, this is, you know, this is by no means the optimal way of doing it. The optimal way of doing it is how you like to do it. Um, you know, you find what works for you and your crew. And if it works and you survive and make some misc and have some fun, then you have the right, correct setup. Yeah, I think we have a really good example of that. Like my gas hopping setup, even pre-changes, was different than Gregorin's just because Gregorin preferred to fly the... Um, prospect over the venture because having that extra mining hold was more valuable and the gnosis was too much of a hassle to move around. Um, I could get more mining yield out of using the T2 ships, but there's too much risk for me to fly those. I'd, 
I'd lose over time just due to how often that I die. I'd lose more isk than I'd, than I'd make in the extra yield. And then I think Nick, with his choice of using Mackinaws over like Hulks or something to, to not have to empty his hold all the time and to be able to have that extra bit of time before needing to dock up is another choice that fits his play style. Optimal is just about what is important to you. You can have different circumstances as just a different optimization problem. So I, I would even argue and say, Nick, what you are doing is optimal. It's optimal for your situation. What I'm doing is optimal for my situation. EVE is a very complex game with even just the three of us on the show. We have three completely different scenarios and uh, sets of factors that we're optimizing for. And so what you really need to do when you have your mining set up is realize what's important to me. Am I a null sec? Am, am I at risk of getting shot? Am I just having to deal with gankers? Is the ore that I'm mining, do I need to care about any residue that's going in there? And then once you have like what you need to optimize for, then you min-max and do that sort of stuff. Yeah, one of the reasons why I prefer the Procurer as my mining barge rather than the Retriever or Coveter is because it's the, the one where I'm least likely to cap myself out warping across the system. Yeah, because Nullsec systems are a lot bigger than Wormholes or, uh, or Fisec systems. Yeah, when I was in Pandemic Horde, there were a few people who had uh, a, st a collection of barges in every system that the Alliance had, so whenever people were mining that system, they could just go and grab their ships there. They don't have to worry about that, but I never invested that much into a mining setup, so I do have to worry about it. Yeah, and I mean, I can say from my time when I was in Horde and I was mining moons, like, it's dangerous to move your ships, even through allied space. There are just so many roamers around in Nullsec. Just like me right now in Wormholes, one of the most dangerous parts of my activity is when I'm jumping through Wormholes to get to the gas sites. Same thing in Nullsec. When you are gating your barges from system to system to get to whatever moon just popped, that is a very dangerous place to be. So it might be worth the upfront investment to just have barges absolutely everywhere. Well, a novel idea here. Uh, we used to do this pre Rorqual boost craziness. Um, we would stick the mining fleet in the Rorqual and jump the Rork there. Everybody else could either run over in uh, something you know small and fast, go grab your ship and go mine. Yeah, and didn't have Rorqual have the. Back before jump clones got changed, the Rorqual had the module that you could fit where people could install clones in the Rorqual and jump clones straight to it, yeah, right? That yeah, that's yeah cool Rorquals and Titans can have that module. It's not still used very much now because clones are a whole lot easier to come by, but I still remember back when it used to take standings with a corporation to install a jump clone in a station. Citadels didn't exist. The way to get jump clones easily was have a friend with a pause and a Rorqual. And you'd go over to your friend in the Rorqual in the pause, install a jump clone. Then you could go to any station, didn't matter if you had standings or not, and jump from that station to the Rorqual. And that's how you generated your clones, instead of having to grind for hours to get your standings up with the corporation you wanted. It was a, a pro tip years ago, but now it's just like useless novelty trivia. I'm over here laughing because I remember doing that. Man, it was so cool. That was the first capital ship I ever saw in space. Was um, my my mining group had some friends who lived in Mosac, and they let us use their Rorqual and their paws to to make jump clones. All right. Well, that was the show about uh, updating our mining fleets to the new changes. A uh, bit different of a tone than normal. Hopefully it was informative. You learned some stuff or you got some ideas on how to optimize your thing. If there are any key takeaways, I think very much the point of different situations require different solutions. So just because you see a forum post saying that this Hulk fitting is the best and you should only fly this ship, like look at your individual situation and optimize for your situation. Don't think that there's going to be a, a single answer for everything. That used to be the work pull. If in nine times out of ten, if you could fly it, you should. Not anymore. So you need to you need to give it some more thought and really think into it, which is fun. 
All right, well, that'll do it for this episode of Talking in Stations. Thank you very much for your time. We'll see you next time. I don't want to bail out yet, no. I want to say thank you to Nick. Thank you to Gagoran for joining us. Thank you to the chat for, for being friendly, asking good questions, bringing up good points to us, and dealing with our technical difficulties. Now we're gone. <laughs>